Did you know people are calling Central Ohio the Silicon Heartland? Stay tuned to find out why. Hey, what's up everyone? Andy Howe here, local real estate agent right here in the Central Ohio market. Today's video, we are talking why people are dubbing this area the Silicon Heartland before we get into that though, please reach down, hit that subscribe button. I just love making videos all about Columbus. Maybe you're thinking about relocating here. Maybe you live here already. Maybe you're just curious about Columbus. Please reach down, hit that subscribe button if that is the case for you. So Intel is investing $20 billion right here in central Ohio. They're building what will be their first semiconductor chip manufacturing plant in like 40 years. If they build it out totally, this will be the biggest one in the world. So how did this happen? Where are we anyway? Well, we're just outside New Albany in Licking County. Intel is coming in here. They have a thousand acre development site right behind me that they're going to be developing. Construction has already started, as you can tell. They are looking to be completed by 2025 and they are bringing about 3,000 jobs that are gonna be paying about $135,000 per year, which is about two and a half times the median income of Central Ohio, of Columbus. So this is going to be absolutely huge. So how the heck did this happen? Well, Central Ohio leaders have a vision for Central Ohio and the Columbus region for it to be the most prosperous city of anywhere in the United States. To understand the type of change that we have come down the pipe for us here in Central Ohio, I think it's important to look at some of the other cities in the country where Intel came in and how they changed. So Chandler, Arizona and, and, and Portland, Oregon are the two other cities I want to I look at today. If you look at Chandler, Arizona, their population over a 40 year period went up eightfold. Now, the vision that leaders have here at Central Ohio is that we're going to have 3 million people by 2050. We're like 1.3 million now. And just a couple of years ago, 3 million by 2050 seems seemed like a moonshot. But with Intel, maybe that's not enough. A doubling of our, po of our population over the next 20 years seems like it's going to be easy. So I just wanted to explore a few things, why this could be great for the area and why could it be not so great for the area. Let's start with the negatives. First off is incentives. Now, this is always a point of contention. Uh, some people hate it, some people love it, but Ohio, we did have to roll out the red carpet to bring Intel here. We gave the largest in our history incentive, a $2 billion incentive for, uh, for Intel to come here. They also have a 30 year tax abatement on, the, on this thousand acres and the improvements on here. There's also a $690 million infrastructure bill that we're gonna be footing, but it's for a good reason. Intel here during their manufacturing are gonna be using a ton of water and this 690 million is gonna be so they can um, recycle and reuse about 95% of that water. Number two, labor. This is going to be a big strain on the area. I mean, if you go around anywhere in the country, in, including here in Columbus, any business you go to, you're gonna see like help wanted signs. The businesses can't pay enough to attract people. And that's where I think some people are gonna get hurt. Intel coming in, paying two and a half times the median income is gonna force other businesses to, to pay more money to keep talent there, to keep labor there. That's gonna be good for, the, for, for you know, the workers and everything, which is great. But unfortunately, some small businesses are not gonna be able to keep pace. They're not gonna be able to make the economics work. It's also gonna be extremely difficult to find labor in the form of contractors, whether you are looking to do a residential or a commercial project. The CEO, Pat Gelsinger said, if there's a construction truck here in Ohio, he wants it working for him here in the New Albany area. Now, he kind of said that jokingly, but it is gonna put a big strain. Like they're gonna be able to have deep pockets and, and pay the contractors to get them out here. But if you're looking to do a bathroom remodel, you're probably gonna have to pay more if you can even find somebody. Next up, cost of living. If you look at what happened in Portland, they basically, before Intel, were like a sleepy little ag area. And then they quickly switched to a bustling tech center when Intel came in. At the expense of housing though, a lot of the houses became unaffordable for, for many of the people living there. A second is traffic. With all this construction right here, there is going to be a ton of traffic in, in not only this area, but all across Columbus. If you look again at Portland, their commute times tripled with Intel coming in. So one of the major advantages 
here in Columbus is our commute times. And lack of commute times, lack of traffic, that could change with all the, all the people moving here, all the construction activity, all the new businesses moving here. Along with that tra traffic, you know, maybe, maybe potential con is here in Columbus, we don't have a strong public transportation. We've got the Coda buses and they're great, but uh, if you don't have a car here, it is a little bit more challenging to move around. Ohio is trying to get some infrastructure dollars here to uh, maybe change that. If we double the population, so something's gotta happen with regards to mass public transit. So those are what I have for cons. Drop a comment below. Let me know what I missed. What, what in your mind is a con with what you know about Intel? But next up, uh, the pros. At the end of the day, I think Intel is a net benefit, a huge one for the area. And let's talk about why it all starts with jobs. I mentioned 3,000 jobs are gonna be created from these first two fabrications alone. There could be a total of eight eventually if they completely build this out, but 3,000 jobs paying $135,000 on average are gonna be created here along with about 7,000 construction jobs just at this site. There's like a job multiplier effect as well. So it's not just Intel is gonna live here in a vacuum. There are gonna be a lot of other companies that are, that are gonna be coming here and bringing jobs with them. Intel says that about for every job, one job they create, about 13 other jobs are created. So that is, that's a whole heck of a lot of jobs created for for the community members here in Central Ohio. Speaking about businesses following, if you just think about what happened since Honda came here 40 years ago up in, up in Marysville, I mean, and all the businesses that are in Central Ohio because they're supplying Honda with parts or, or you know engineering or something, th this is a good place for businesses to come because we have so many colleges, universities, technical schools here in Ohio. There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of millennial talent specifically here which is great if you're a company you know, coming to the area. Next, pro are schools working together. These companies, Intel and all the ones that are following, are gonna need a lot of talent. No schools can do it alone. One of the things I love most about Central Ohio is the way that community works together. Ohio State and other area regional schools are gonna be working together to develop curriculums so people can have the skill sets that Intel needs them to have when they get out of school. So really it's a win, win, win. It's a win for Intel because they're gonna have a reliable talent pool that's trained up how they need them trained up. For the schools it's a win because their clients, their students know that they're gonna have a, for sure have a job when they get out of school. And if you're a student, it's a win because you know you're gonna get a job and be able to uh, repay some of the investment you made in your education. So I don't see how that goes bad, but don't think if you didn't go to college that you're not gonna be able to get a job here. About 50% of the jobs are gonna be created here, so about 1,500. The only requirement prerequisite is going to be a GED or high school degree. Another 7% are gonna require an associate's degree, and then the remainder are gonna require a bachelor's degree or higher. Intel is going to be investing $100 million nationwide to incentivize schools to educate the workforce. 50 million of that though is going to be deployed right here in Ohio in the form of grants. So that's a boon for Ohio uh, schools. Next advantage, uh, taxes. Now I know we as Ohioans offered a huge incentive to get Intel here, but this is going to create a net gain in taxes in the form of sales taxes, in the form of real estate taxes, more tax dollars into the state, into the area communities are going to mean better amenities for us all. Next up, the Columbus Airport. You know, there's gonna be a lot of big executives flying in and out of the Columbus area. Right now, it's hard to find a direct flight to a lot of the areas of the country. I think that's gonna change from demand for from executives. Columbus is already in the works to build a new terminal. This type of activity here with Intel, I think is only gonna accelerate those, those new terminal plans, which will be a benefit for all of us. Last thing, this is just a lead domino. 2022, there was more investment than ever before in, in Ohio, more promised investment, $30 billion. Of course, 20 billion of that is Intel here. Honda is, is investing 5 billion to retool some of their local factories and build a new electric vehicle. Uh, plant over in Fayette County. Facebook Meta investing $1.5 billion to expand their operations here. Google investing another billion dollars to expand their operations here. You've got this really cool company called Hyperion, a uh, California-based company trying to make a hydrogen car. And then tons of other electrical vehicle uh, investments. There's probably a video on its own. Look out for that in the future. So when you look at all the pros and cons, I just don't see how this is not going to be a huge benefit for Ohio 
in everyone living here. It is important though that we do our R&D. By R&D, I mean rip off and deploy. We've got to take the lessons, what, what, what worked really well out in Chandler, out in Portland, and apply them here. We've got to realize and understand what didn't work well and make sure that doesn't happen here. I, I think that this is gonna be really big for everybody. Thanks for watching. Let me know what I missed. Uh, let me know what your opinion of Intel here is here, good, bad, or indifferent. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.